All right, looking at question 15 here, we have an amide and we want to turn it into an acid chloride. Now, if we look over our summer reactions or reflect on this chapter, we'll see that our amides can be turned into a lot of things, but no um, acetyl chlorides, so it, or no acid chlorides. So no quick way of doing this on a single step. But we look at the um, any of the action, reactions that will make an acid chloride. There's only two. Both of them start with a carboxylate. All right, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to actually make a carboxylate and then turn that carboxylate into a, a, an acid chloride. Now, there's only one way we can really do that first step, and that's with some water, some base, and some heat. But if we do that, we'll rip off that NH2 and actually end up with a O negative there, our carboxylate. Now, this step, there is two ways of doing this step, um, but they're both um, very similar. SOCl2 or PCl3 with heat. Now, if you um, think back in our alcohols chapter, those were the same reagents we used to turn alcohols into acid chlorides. So it kind of seems like there might be some related action with the heat to make this happen. But that is the easiest thing, easiest way to do that. All right. 16 can be a bit tricky because I have two carbons and I want to add two more with a OH. Fortunately for us, two carbons and an OH, or a carboxylic acid, um, that can be something that we might recognize as well. We're going to do step one, we'll react it with an epoxide. And step two, we would do some um, water. But actually, um, that was just to get the two carbons on there, and technically it got it as an alcohol. So I'm going to write it as that. As in, wait, I think that might be a good step to put two carbons and an O onto the back side of a nucleophile, or to get the two carbons onto that. So I'm going to put it here as a good possibility that would give us four carbons and an OH. Now that's promising because to oxidize an alcohol into a carboxylic acid is relatively easy. That's just that, um, excuse me, sodium hypochlorite with some uh, acetic acid at zero degrees Celsius and we could oxidize that easily enough. But we would have had to have at this point two carbons and a organometallic. So I'm going to draw that different. Two carbons as something like an organometallic. Well, that's okay. We can make that out of two carbons that happen to have a halogen on there. I got that arrow backwards. And that would have happened if we put that in with some lithium followed by some copper one iodide. And I can do that if I reflect on my alcohols chapter with some PCL3. All right, to get a bit of a summary, um, these bottom parts are stuff from this newest material. Take an a, a, um, alkylhalide, turn it into a Gilman reagent, reacting it with a... Um, epoxide 
is a great way of adding two carbons and an OH onto an R group. We're saying this is the R group here. The only thing we had to do here is actually turn my our starting ingredient into a alkyl halide. Um, now, um, we've done a lot with making alkyl halides, but from alcohols, I could have actually just remembered. See, I should have that flashed here. The alcohols to make alkyl halides, there were just very limited things. If it was a tertiary or secondary, we could use a... Uh, an acid with some heat, but since this one was primary, we want to use uh, PCl3 or SOCl2 to add a chlorine onto the end. Once we got an alkyl halide, we can do stuff from chapter um, uh, 11. And then once we get to an alcohol, we just needed to remember another thing from that chapter. Um, oxidization of an alcohol can be done with uh, sodium hypochlorite. I guess technically I had the temperature quite wrong because that would have stopped out an aldehyde. Um, but I'm going to take that temperature off. Give it a little more, more heat, just a little bit more, and it'll continue to oxidize. That should be a CH3. All right, number 17. This one's a little bit easier because it's going to be related to just our chapter because we have um, three carbons and we want four carbons in an OH. Adding a single carbon is typically done with a nitrile. Now, theoretically, this being a nucleophile, I could replace with a CN by itself but we're not going to have that happen too easily. So I have a couple options we could do. We could use that tosylate chloride to turn this into a good leaving group and then we can just react it with a nitrile to replace that with a nitrile. Or what we could have done, um, similar to that previous problem, use some PCL3 along with some pyridine to make a alkyl halide and then react that alkyl halide with the cyanide. Both things, those first two steps, these alternative ones, both of them did the same thing. They turned the alcohol into a better leaving group, into something that leaves better. So that nucleophile CN can replace it. Now, at least in concept, we could have got there just by reacting it straight with some CN, but that's probably not going to react nearly as well. There's a good chance that's basic enough it might actually deprotonate some of your alcohol and just not do anything. So it's better on an alcohol, turn it into a good leaving group before you try to do a nucleophilic substitution. So I am going to erase that. I don't want that. The two steps better. All right, now that I have uh, an amide, we are now dealing with stuff from our current chapter 15 and um, if I happen to have a nitrile and I have it right there if I do water HCl and some heat I can turn that into a carboxylic acid turn that back into a pencil so water acid and heat and I will turn it into a carboxylic acid where that carbon that was the nitrile becomes the carbonyl and the OH. So on this one I have a couple things that are technically from our alcohols chapter but all of the alcohol chapter was showing us ways we could actually replace the OH with other things and nucleophile fits into that other thing. We're just having a CN replace the OH.